just before we start, if you haven't watched the documentary already, please go and watch it first without me talking over it, and then you can come and watch this and see my thoughts and opinions. Hello and welcome to my very first director's commentary. Now, <laughs> this is going to be different to any other video you've seen on this channel and probably any other director's commentary you've ever seen because from all the director's commentaries I've ever seen, they apparently don't even do the video. But I've not uploaded for a while, so I thought, why not take a look at my very first documentary that I've ever made. And we'll watch it together. It came out last night on my portfolio channel, so I'll leave a link to the full video down below so you can go check it out for yourself without me talking a lot of shit all over it. So, let's just jump straight into it. So the main element of this documentary was to show how a town without funding can still thrive as a community now. Now, I don't think I actually presented that very well. So, because when I originally pitched this idea, it was it was meant to be a slander fest. That's I'm going to be brutally honest. It was meant to just be a horrible, horrible slander fest, which is what it pretty much turned out to be. But it was more just a way of me practicing my skills and showing off the, the not-so-nice parts. Now, it does progress to get a bit nicer, so we're just... So I decided to start out with a shot of, well, up just around the corner, um, Haywood. of like a city, <laughs> the, 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 just over the horizon looking towards the church with the title screen, which was just literally just so you know what you're watching. And obviously I'm narrating, there's also Antonia who is also narrating, so... And we start, then we go straight into a shot of a window ledge of like a, I think it's a mill or a factory or uh, some very old decrepit building that is from like the 1900s. I think most buildings are, to be fair. Um, but the paint's all chipping off and it's just rusty. So, and the reason I've done it in black and white is because not all the shots were done on the same day. So I could have very easily got them well I could, I could have made it so they all looked like pretty much identical but because the weather was different and stuff i thought gray and monotone is quite a grungy like looking palette so i thought well if we do it in black and white I've, I've actually got colored versions as well but i just i just really like the way the black and white with a bit of it's a, got a very very subtle blue tint to it and i really like that subtle blueness so that's that's just how it is. I just like the way it looks. I really... I, I didn't write the narration for it. That was down to the writer, obviously. <laughs> um, I think she did a really good job, and it made it very, very moving. Wasn't what I originally intended, but I think it works very well for the scenario or for the thing that we do. Then we obviously we move on to this nice shot of this closed down... I think it were a baby clothes shop uh, it was called like daisy's chest Jay-Z, daisy's chest or something i think i'm pretty convinced that's what it was called and it literally the sign is literally just like falling to pieces so i thought well that looks quite nice there's there is a recurring theme throughout as well of just flat straight on buildings and all these buildings that are that were once something are now just empty to let a for sale that just nobody wants. And then obviously we then show the old Nat West building, which is now a pound shop. And quite a lot of, from, for the research that we did, we had to speak to like people of the public and we were talking to one of the owners of the market. Now the market is literally across the road from this building, but there's like three or four pound shops. They're all just cheap tat and um, for a building that is very iconic because it's quite old and it would have been, mm, and it has like the bank vault and stuff in it still. Well, not the, it's just the vault door. It's still there, but it's, it's, it's such, it's so horrible. The fact it's just literally a pound shop. Now I'm not saying that all pound shops are horrible, but I'm just saying because it's such a great looking building and it's just been made into this fucking, it's just been made into this, tat just like selling all this crap 
it i think it can i think it's quite powerful obviously you can't really tell it's the full building but so this shot of these children on this merry-go-round thing or roundabout whatever the fuck they call them was actually taken from something i did earlier this year in which so i because ba basically they do a thing every year where they like, pretend it's the 1940s, which I don't know why, because that was not a very good time to be alive in. Um, and this is just some footage that I got. Now, you might be thinking, Ben, why are you filming kids? I didn't intend to film them. I was just going around filming things. And I thought, oh, that's a good composition. Let's use that. I quite like that shot of the traffic lights. And then you get this taxi rank. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of all the things that happened with that taxi well not that taxi company but the one of the older taxi companies that use this building because it's pretty disgusting and it's not really this isn't really the medium for that and it's not really any of my business but let's just put it this way it wasn't the nicest thing to happen and i think just because the building is so like the paint's all flaking off and like the new heart for haywood sign is all dirty and stuff it's like mm -hmm. We wanted to revitalise it, but we just failed. So that's the kind of thing I'm trying to get with this shot. And people just walk past it and don't bother with it. I'm not a big fan of this shot of the church, just because it's just quite simple and it doesn't really move. This shot of the old, an old pub that was like used, now closed down again, just, it's just because it's just been left for years. All my life it's been closed down. And then we move on to this shot of bin of some bins that haven't been emptied. Now, the, these aren't normal people's bins. These these aren't like next to a house or anything. These are next to a takeaway. But you don't know that there's a takeaway unless I tell you that there's a takeaway there. So these bins haven't been emptied, and they are like the council bins. So with, if you listen to the voiceover, I talk about funding being weak now. Because they've not got the money to, they can't afford to... Because we used to get, like, I think it was, like, the dark green, which is general waste and recycling on one day, and then, like, paper and summer on, like, the next week, and then the week after it would be general and stuff again. But now they literally... You don't have, like, your general waste being collected for, like, two weeks, three weeks. like So it's literally... It builds up for a month. Which isn't very good, is it, really, if you think about it, because... You, you get full of most households no, normally only have one. So when you're frigging weird and you eat like shit, even though you shouldn't really put food waste in them, or, you know, you just, you, you've got a lot of rubbish, then they get full very easily because they're not very big bins. The old shop's closing down as we speak. That Skyware men and women clothing shop used to be a phone shop. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't even remember him changing the sign. And I th I just like the way the paint is on it, on the shutters. It's 43 because it's probably the number 43 on the row. Uh, I don't know, it just it looks kind of cool. It is kind of slanted, which I'm, I'm not too happy about. But, uh, well, I've only just noticed it because I'm looking at it on a big screen for the first time. But also, if you might you might notice a thing with all the people. They're all wearing trackies or, they, you know, they're not very... Um, Nicely dressed, whereas in like the olden days, you'd have all, men would have always worn suits and women would have always worn dresses. In the shot, when I, on the last shot of the bins, there is a bit that I didn't include of like these chavs walking past and they're like talking about how much weed they're going to sell. And like one of them's like, ha, ha, at camera, but he's wearing like Lonsdale trackies or whatever. I don't even know what trackies were. They were just trackies and tracky top and stuff. And it was like, hmm. But you're not even going running, so why are you dressed up like that? Admittedly, he was going to sell weed, so that's probably the main um, culprit for that. Uh, this shot here is of the old Lloyd, so again, another bank that's closed. Uh, this, I don't, this was like one of the very first shots that I envisioned when I had the idea, because I knew that this Lloyd's branch had been closed, and it's it just looks so like, oh, it doesn't... I keep saying the word horrible and I'm not trying to put a negative thing on the town for by any means. I'm just literally making a point that all these empty buildings that, you know, were once something are now just nothing because nobody uses them. This is more just of a thing of society, not just Hayward in general. It is quite like common for all like because you can just go on your phone and 
check your thing and like these cash machines have been boarded over and stuff. It's just it just doesn't look that great. <laughs> this shot still makes me laugh because this this elderly lady, she looks at me like because she's here crossing. She presses the button. She, and I've not included it in the thing, but she looks at me and gives me this right dirty look because she's like, well, what's this lad taking photos of me for? I don't know why the fuck she's from Birmingham all of a sudden. But yeah, she's just... <laughs> it's just this look she gives me like... And she does something with her mouth and then turns away. It's like... Mm. <laughs> it's jingles my heart. I'm just like, oh, now my battery's going to die. And that's not... a yeah, it's all. It's quite... Like, if you just look at all these people, that's a biggish elderly lady. You get some really scrawny teenager who's pushing a pram. I think she's pu is she pushing a pram. Uh, no, but there's a pram over there that's just been... Looks like it's been left. There's literally a pram that's been left. I've only... I can't believe I've only just noticed that. That's mental. There's literally a pram that's just been left. Uh I think the woman was going to go get it, but he just shows the different types of people and stuff that you get as well. So I quite like that. That was the whole point with that. And also with the B&M in the background is because that used to be a Dunn's, which we had one of the very few Dunn stores that actually exist because it's mainly like an Irish company. And it's just been replaced with this B&M, big, massive corporate, another big pound shop type thing. And... Thing is, is I've not shown it in colour, but the starburst behind it, I just think is really horrible. And as well, this this door on this side, it used you used to be able to walk through it and like go through duns and stuff, but now you've got to walk all the way through it. So realistically, if somebody's coming, say they've come to do the shopping in Morrison's because the Morrison's like literally next to it. So say they've come to do the shopping in Morrison's, like oh, I'll just see if, if they've got anything in B and M, like a toilet seat or whatever. They can't go into the town and look at things in the town, so the town community is sort of dying because you literally can't go through them doors because it's literally like the back of the building sort of thing, and now they're just fire doors. So it's kind of like, well, realistically, we don't want you seeing the town. We want you to spend all your money here, which I guess is kind of the point of a shop, but that's not really fair on the rest of the community. Shout out some birds just because I'm mad. Penis on a wall, that is quite common, as well as Macca. Because it is. I did try and get a shot of some, like, electrical thing, but I did it on some wheels on a tripod, and it was really, like, shaking stuff, so I didn't use it. Um, but, yeah, like, why, why would somebody want to paint a penis on a wall? What? How immature must you be to want to paint a penis on a wall? You know, you can't you can't buy spray paint. So that's clearly like an older person that's done it, not an older person. Like I don't mean like an AOAP. I mean like maybe 18, 19, 20. Or maybe, they've, maybe it is a young person. They've just managed to get their hands on some, what they call it, spray paint. But it seemed pathetic. Like when I was stood there, this man come, this gentleman. So some gentleman come over to me and like, excuse me, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I explained to him what I was doing. And you're like, oh, right, are you doing it about... Because I, I just said I'm doing a documentary, just filming because it looks... He was like, yeah, well, this is my building. Um, and I've had to have it painted, like, a good few times because people just keep vandalising it. And it's like, what What do you What do you get about... What do you get from drawing a cock on a wall? Nothing. But people still do it because they're weird. Uh, Morrison's bag been left. Uh, this shot in color, the only the, I think this is the only shot that I wish I had in color, even though I do have it in color. Obviously, I just don't like. Uh, there is something about it. It's kind of nice in black and white, but I think the colored version was better. But this is like it's a thing about like litter and stuff. Somebody's just it's like a back alley. And they've just left a Morrison's bag. Well, why not just put it in the bin? Surely there's a bin behind your house because clearly they've. Be walking to their house and just put it in your bin. What? How much of scruff must you be? I don't know. Ow. Um, th th this is like a weather spoons and somebody's stolen the W off the wall. You can't turn around and tell me that it's just fallen down because it just hasn't. I do not believe that it will have fallen down. 
it is a bit slanted, so I'm a little bit mm, about that, but uh, end of day, the road was slanted. And I filmed it on a wide-angle lens, so it would have been um, slanted. But, yeah, also, I'm going to change the battery in the camera. It's like, the thing is, is like if you're ever in the town in the morning, you still see people in it at, like, 9 o'clock in the morning. Not necessarily drinking, but some of them are drinking, which is mental because it's literally, like, stupid o'clock in the morning. I always, I was told that you're not allowed to serve alcohol before like 10 a.m. I've been in weather spoons at like before 10 a.m. on like a weekend and stuff with like my dad and stuff to get us to get a breakfast, obviously, because I'm a weirdo. And there's been people drinking pints of like Carly and stuff, and it's like that's pretty good, you know, your life must be very good. <laughs> This is funny because literally it's just job centre. <laughs> nobody in the about the 10 minutes I waited, nobody come to it. And you'd think, oh, nobody works. According to the statistics on the Rochdale Council's website, the unemployment rate is really bad. And I did not see a single, the only person that walked past were a woman with a kid. And she didn't go in it. No, nobody bar her walked past. So I literally had to film myself. But I didn't use that bit because it was embarrassing, so I just used this thing. Uh, when I did it as well, it says on the door that um, please use the other door. And I didn't realise. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, I almost walked in and that were a little bit embarrassing. I don't like this shot, but it, it does because you've got a close down, take, you've got a close takeaway and something's for sale or something. Uh, look, you can see the amount of for sale signs. It's mental. It is pretty mental. And then, like, you get this building with, like, boarded up windows, and it's like, yeah, there's, like, a, there's, like, a... What do you call it? What do you call it? A fun fair, I think is the correct word for it. Literally, like, a fair thing on a field. Probably run by jippos. Oh, it's like, oh, yeah, next to Iceland. It's like, mm. Again, the shot from my... An older video I did... Again, yeah, so this is where it starts to get a bit more positive. So I've used shots like the soldiers and they were doing their um, parade. They were a bit in this one with this lady at the bus stop on the right or on the sc the right of the screen. She, in, like, I think at the start of it, she literally were putting her hands down a top. I don't know whether she was scratching her armpit or playing with a tit or what. I don't know, but I don't even know. Did I include that bit? No, I didn't. I, I think I don't think the um, commentary fits I should have really used a shot where there were lots of people but see that th this is kind of a positive image because these two elderly people look like they're having quite a good time so I'm just like well that's good and she's up on a stage she looks happy but probably because she's being paid but it just, I don't know, there's something about it that I think is a good shot. I quite like this one. We were meant to have a meeting with one of the flower organisations, which I know sounds a bit pathetic. Um, no, actually, no, it weren't. It was a park committee. We were meant to meet and we were there for like an hour waiting for them and they just didn't turn up. So that was nice of them. I really appreciate that, even though we still credited them because I'm a great person. And I think this is probably going to be one of my favourite shots. And I know it's pathetic because it's literally just a bench. But it's a very nice looking set of benches. And it's just the way it curves around. And it, because I've used the 21 by 9 aspect ratio, which is, I've done that intentionally. Um, because I wanted to look cinematic. Because that's the, the aspect ratio most films are sh like displayed in. So, I've decided, I decided to do it like that. And yeah, it's just a bench. It's nicely in focus. Uh, I wish I'd have done a focus pull, but I didn't, so, yeah. And that is the final shot of the documentary, of the actual part of the documentary, and then we change into Night Sky by Tracy Chataway with a bit of the time-lapse of the cityscape, and I'm going to let the credits play just because I want to get acknowledgement for the people that were involved, and mainly me. But, yeah, and also the organisations as well, even longer, like I say, most of them we didn't use. We were originally going to use this song as the main thing of the, the, 
documentary and I'd just had. But then I got the sound mixer Espoir. Well, he did a version with the other song, which is The King by Tony Anderson, um, as it says on the screen there. <laughs> he did it, and I've, I've preferred it. So that's why it's better to work with people as well. Admittedly, it's probably the only thing he did, but mm, not just, just not going to get into that. Um, I, I, I really like the way the credits look. I really like the way the time lapse looks in black and white, and then the logos are in like colour. Admittedly, them t- first two, we didn't really use. We contacted them, and we, we were going to use them, and I made the credits before. Um, what's his name? But I thought I'd just leave it in anyway. Um, and then it just goes into our, well, my logo, and then their names. The thing is with this, this caused a massive argument because my logo is literally by Brown because that alliterates with my name, and I had it in the centre just because I made it... F- I was originally just going to use my name, and because my name is by Be- well, my name is Ben Brown, and that's by Ben Brown is the name I wanted to use for my organisation, in air quotes. And I didn't put by on their names because their names don't alliterate with it. It caused massive controversy, but I'm not going to get into it because I think it's a fucking load of shit. But that's just my opinion. <sighs> And I, yeah, like the little, the subtle bits of colour just, just, just make it stand out and it looks really, really good. But that was my first ever director's commentary. It was more just like a reaction video. Um, if you want me to do these for more of the things that I've done, so say like two wrongs and stuff like that, then let me know and I'll probably, and I wouldn't do it because, yeah, um, I'd, I, I literally had no ideas of what I could make. And I literally just had some time today and I thought, you know what, I will record it and I will upload it the day after because the day after is a Monday. So, like I say, if you want to watch it without... Well, if you haven't watched it already, then I don't know why you've literally just watched this. Um, but you have, so... Yeah. Um, hopefully you found it good. Please give me your feedback down below and I'll be sure to take it into consideration for the next time I ever do any, if I ever do anything like this again, which I probably will. Um... And yeah, just give me your feedback. I'll appreciate. I appreciate it all, whether it's negative, positive. I'd prefer it if it was constructive. Not just like oh, it was shit because there's nothing I can do with it. It was shit. At least if you're like, well, I wish you'd have done it in color because in color then you can encapsulate what it's like as in, in the actual town itself. As opposed to in black and white, it could just be anywhere. I don't know something like that. That that kind of makes sense in my brain. Anyway. But yeah, like I say, if you did enjoy, let me know by leaving a like on it, um, as well as your feedback in the comments. Um, a massive shout out to Antonia and Eswa for all their help with this project. I appreciate it greatly. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Ben, and this was my very first documentary director's commentary so yes we'll see you in the next video